In this segment, we're going to talk about how BERT can be applied to question answering. So this won't take very long because the solution is relatively straightforward. So what we've got here is a question and a corresponding passage that are formatted for input to BERT. And so the changes that we've made are we've appended this CLS token, um, which we are actually not going to use, but it is still expected by BERT as part of the input, and so we put it. Then we have the question. Then we have this separator token. So for all the sentence pair tasks that we looked at for BERT and for the next sentence prediction module, they always separate it with a separator. And so uh, you know that'll be part of the input here. And then we have uh, the passage, which again can be quite long. So uh, then what we do is we just feed this into BERT And what are we trying to predict? So again, as a span extraction task, we are trying to predict a start and end distribution. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take the output BERT vectors at each position in the passage, and we are going to put these through two uh, small feedforward networks or just a matrix multiply, essentially, uh, to compute a score. And so we're going to have uh, S1 and E1 for start and end scores, S2, E2, um, et cetera. And then uh, we are going to softmax over the SI to give the probability of start given P and Q. And uh, same thing for EI to get the probability of end. All right. so. This is relatively straightforward here. We just kind of staple these things in. We use it as a way of producing a passage encoding. And we don't have to worry about any of the sort of cross-attention ideas or these bilinear products to capture the interaction between Q and P. Because now, we, what we assume is that within BERT, it's sort of looking at these correspondences internally. and so. Uh, by the time we get all the way up here with a word, it should have already looked back at everything in the question, and Bert has hopefully decided whether or not this is the answer or not. So then we can just decode that information right out of this vector on top. So this is great. It simplifies the QA architectures really dramatically. Um, there is a big caveat, which is the 512 word piece length limit. So remember that BERT had these additional uh, positional embeddings, which basically looked like vectors for each uh, integer in the input. And so uh, what happens is BERT is pre-trained on uh, passages of up to size 512. And Remember that it uses a word piece segmentation uh, and not actual words. So you actually don't even get a whole 512 words in there. Um, instead, you get something less. And in general, like you, you might think, oh, OK, I want to answer this question from this Wikipedia article. Well, that Wikipedia article may very well be more than 500 words. And so once you put the CLS question separator and the article, you know, you've, you've blown your 512 limit. So the the kind of takeaway here is that we need to really operate within a, a, a kind of pipeline here. Um, we need to identify small context as input to BERT. Um, and there's, there are plenty of methods that will do things like, you know, they'll have several different 512 chunks they'll run BERT over each of those and then kind of pool the results. So there are ways, there are ways around this if you want to run on more data. Um, but generally, what's needed is some sort of course-defined pipeline where you use some kind of other model to determine, OK, what, are the, what, what, what is the small passage that I'm going to run my BERT model on? Um, focus in on that and then use the BERT model to get the answer.
So BERT is very convenient and allows us to do QA problems very nicely. Um, so that's good, but there, it's not without its shortcomings um, and it presents some logistical challenges which people in QA have spent a long time, well, okay, a long time <laughs> over the past two years, a lot of hours have been spent figuring out how to try to fix this problem. Uh, so yeah, that basically gives us a, a kind of picture of how we might use BERT here and what it can do for us. That's the end of this segment.